You know, I did I did contribute one thing to this game. Oh yeah. Uh, my understanding is that there is a weapon that shoots ninjas somewhere, like it's, a bomb or something. Is um I there's one that creates penguins. Okay, so never mind then. But for a while there was a bomb that shot ninjas. Right. Okay. And that that was my idea, and I guess it didn't make it into the final game, which is sad. But you know that was my that was my contribution. A cut, a cut weapon. Right. Uh, another one, uh, not for this game, but another contribution of yours, and it's one of my favorite stories ever, um, but you mentioned in the charity stream, it's just generally one of my favorite stories ever. Um, <laughs> it's uh, It actually made it into my best of Teal Game Master. I recorded that, I, fa I scoured through the five hour stream to find that bit, just so I can <laughs> okay. put it in, the cutscene gun. <laughs> oh, the cutscene gun. That magnificent gun. story. <laughs> that, that is was... a greatest idea why <laughs> we were sitting around and brainstorming absurd weaponry uh because I, I think we were trying to come up we were trying to come up with the zodiac at the time yeah uh and that was kind of how we came up with the idea for flashing the screen white and killing everything mm. except that uh in our original ideas the idea kept getting grander and grander and more and more impossible and uh so what we came up with uh as a joke was the cutscene gun <laughs> <laughs> so it's you brilliant. all right so let me see if i can do this gun justice all right so you uh, you face a screen full of enemies and you press the button and the screen flashes white and then it plays a cutscene of like an old woman in a rocking chair shedding a single tear and then it cuts to like uh uh you know like a native american in full headdress like uh uh and, and then it goes back and it's like the highway and there's, you know, uh, birds flying over it. And then at the end, there's a nuclear bomb. And you hear, Rectus Dominus. And then you come back and Ratchet would just be standing on a little island. Like, maybe a couple meters wide. And then, uh, and that's it. That was the end. You'd have to restart the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's much grander than you described in the stream. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, there, there were, we, the, the fun part was coming up with, things to add to the cutscene that would make it more ridiculous and unnecessarily epic. You know, like the old woman yeah. in the rocking chair crying and the nuclear bomb and it was like just you know like Nazis marching past <laughs> and like every, the, the 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 twin towers falling down like anything you could think of that would be emotional we wanted to put that in. Uh, uh, it was it was not a uh, it was not a particularly uh what's the word uh Except compassionate yeah uh, yeah it's not not acceptable or reasonable yeah. or even a particularly uh <laughs> you, you know a, a particularly yeah. uh, sensitive thing yeah. to, to think of so i'm a little embarrassed about it now but the uh but it's, it's still it's still yeah. kind of funny for the idea right it's brilliant i love it it still sort of reminds me of super meat boy have you played that i have yeah yes. with um the squirrel where it's just a single it like sheds a tear of all its um squirrel friends <laughs> Um, dead, and then a saw blade comes and slices <laughs> off its head and cuts away. It's brilliant. It's, that, that's it's the just, kind of that's what I'm picturing in my head. That kind of thing. It's and just the sort it's, of it's, it's right. yeah. It's the sort of uh, over the top imagery that you come up with when it's like, five so in the morning. Yeah, and something you, that shouldn't be allowed, but it just works gr brilliantly. Yeah, it makes it makes you laugh at four in the morning. You know. Yeah, it, it tests it tests the limits of how accept how accepting you are to certain things <laughs> and you know it's like the joke bugs we did like we used to talk about those too where uh you know we would we would put in a bug into yeah. the database that was just a joke mm. and then it would get passed around to everybody and people would add to the joke and it would just be sort of you know nice mm. wait where the hell did you just go um there's a section underwater and then now we went through uh the, this pipe with oh, tank. the oni part okay I remember yeah there's oni Fix! Yeah, those. those yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! That yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my friend, remember my friend uh, Sean Whistler I mentioned earlier? He designed yes. these clank sections. Oh, right. Cool. Yeah, yeah these, these sections are pretty fun, actually. I really like the clank sections because, do you know why? Clank is fast. Especially when you <laughs> jump. Look, walking, walking, jumping. Look how fast he moves. He's so really good. fast when he jumps. To, yeah. I love it. Speed running tactics. He, there you go. Does he have attacks like in? Oh, uh, he yeah, he, he can do that. He's got um, a levitate thing by the zone. It's it's great. He's great in this yeah. game. I remember in Kraken Time, he's he's much better though, because like he can. 
I mean, he's got um, slow down time here, but he's right. got um, he's got like a stop time, and he's got a scepter, and he can levitate, and he can create. I remember. Like, I remember that power. one. Yeah. It's great. I love it. <laughs> Clank's genuinely really fun. Like, I really like him in Ratchet and Clank Three, and like one one he was really slow. Like, I couldn't deal with it. In f two, it was better, but it was still it was just like eh. In three, there was like one or two Clank sections, and they were really fun because he actually walked fast. So I was just like, yeah, I like. Yeah, we Clank. had a doesn't we, detract. We, we reanimated him in the third one to fix some of those problems. You know, like yeah. we gave him the karate chops and the secret yeah. agent suit and stuff like that, but. At that point, we didn't really understand why people liked Clank. Right. Uh, I mean, we, we did understand why, but we... Uh, if you'd asked any of us, uh, we wouldn't have been able to tell you all the moves behind it at that point. Right. Like, it's mainly about... Like, the, the Clank gameplay, this sort of Clank gameplay, is mainly about sort of Clank doing incredibly funny things while you run around in oversized environments, and it's just sort of personable, you know? I think uh, I'm going to put on big head mode. Oh, put on big head mode. That's the cheats. We got big head mode for characters, big head enemies. Yeah, that's what we want. Oh, wait, do you want tiny or huge or big? Uh, huge. Huge, huge is better than, than tiny or, or regular. Uh, apparently on big head enemies, there's only tiny or big. So big it is. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't even see where I'm going. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that the Zoni's heads aren't bigger. <laughs> Oh, that's great. But that's okay. I, I'll take it. Oh. I like it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God, that I... was not a... That reminds me... I've got wonderful memories of uh, uh, Rugrats. A Rugrats game where that pretty much happens. Like, it's big head mode, and it's like five times the size of the character. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> oh, my God. They're huge. <laughs> I love it. Oh, he yeah. came up with this. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, I don't know who came up with Big Head mode in general, but we've been doing it. But Big Head's been in there since the first game, so yeah, it's it's a tradition now. It's genius. I love it. You know, the uh, the one thing, though, is uh, the heads aren't collidable when they're big, so you can't actually aim for the giant head. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit confusing. That's the only... Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, wrong one. Um... Right, next on uh, Digimon 1990, but he's also known as um, NS. Uh, he was in the charity stream uh, with oh. us. Um, you may remember him, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First question was, are you excited for the Ratchet Clank movie? We've already covered that. So, um, so excited! <laughs> yes, is the answer. Um, other one, when the first Ratchet Clank game was in development, did you uh, even think it would be a huge success, or as much of a success as it was? Um... It's hard for me to remember because I didn't know very much about what video game success was when I was on Ratchet One. Yeah. So, and I, I don't remember ever talking to anyone about uh, expectations, but uh, uh, the let's see, y you know what? Uh, there were some some sort of interesting things happening in the industry at that point that might be worth talking about, right. like. So, uh, Jack and Daxter came out the year before Ratchet and Clank 1. And, uh, I thought it was uh, the same year. No, it was the year before. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, the first Jack and Daxter. Uh, usually we would alternate years. Is mm. uh, like um, Not alternate years, but... Um, um, so, Jack 1 came out. I think there were two years between that and Jack 2 because they were sort of re-envisioning it. Right. And the reason they re-envisioned it, from what I remember hearing, was... Uh, that uh, up until, say, I think it was 2000 or 2001, mascot platformers were the best-selling thing in games, period. Yeah. Crash Bandicoot made more money than any game on the planet. <laughs> really? What, what you wanted to be was Crash Bandicoot. Because right. Crash Bandicoot made bank in the United States, and it made bank in Japan, and it made bank in Europe and England. And of course it did in Japan. Crash Bandicoot! <laughs> but Crash Bandicoot was, at that point, was the only Western game that did well in Japan, period. Oh, really? Right? Like, generally speaking, Western games just did nothing in Japan at that point. I mean, there was a lot of J-pop games, like Vib Ribbon. I wasn't closely following sort of that sort of thing yet. 
but uh, that was what was happening at the time, right? Yeah. You wanted to be big in Japan so that you could ha you could be as big as Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. But what happened that the year that Jack came out or the year before it came out was Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and, <laughs> Look at that Auto, Oh my god, <laughs> this face is so fluffy. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I love it. I really can't see where I'm going. Um, right. That's insane. <laughs> maybe maybe try just big instead of huge. Okay, let's, let's switch out. I don't even want to. It's not that big. It doesn't really look that much different. I think... Let's see what Tiny's like. Tiny... Tiny's where it's at. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> it's adorable. Okay. Oh, God. It's like, it's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's so adorable. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't remember what I was saying though. What was I saying? Um, I don't know, but this animation's great. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this head is so small. <laughs> this head is so small. This is worth it just for that, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but it's really funny. Uh, we know why it's funny. <laughs> um. Oh, right. Mary was saying... Mary Mary just told me. I was talking about GTA. Ah, yes. Uh, it came out shortly before Jack and Daxter, and it did so much better than anything that has ever happened, ever. Okay. Right? And so... And, and, uh, and after that point, the sales of mascot platformers dropped significantly. Oh, okay. Uh, or at least they did relative to the sales of... Uh, mature and teen rated games right, right. There, at that point there were a ton of huge failures in the platform space uh, so we were fortunate because we were making a shooter uh, yeah. but Naughty Dog at the time was making a mascot platformer mm. so we were we were living in this post GTA world where we had no idea how well a mascot game would perform even if it wasn't a platformer right so when Ratchet came out and it received the acclaim that it did Mm. And when Ratchet 2 and Ratchet 3 just received more, you know, it was incredibly gratifying. Yeah. Um, another question was, uh, which Rhino is your favorite, but we've already covered that one. Um, right, who's next? Super Tesla Coil, new page. Uh, uh, I have a question. How, actually, I'm really intrigued about this one. How come uh, Deadlock and Gladiator didn't have um, special giant bolts to collect, like gold bolts and platinum bolts? They didn't? Uh, I don't think so, no. It was That's... just skill points. Wow, okay, I actually don't remember. I I would have sworn that they had platinum bolts. Uh, uh I don't but let me think make so. let me make a guess. My uh the the game we were originally making with Deadlocked was very different than the game that eventually oh, really? uh, we made. Um because the original concept for the game was uh you know the arena battles from the third game? Yeah. The original concept was all arena battles all the time, sprinkled right. with other gameplay, right? Yeah. And uh, we done we put a ton of work into it. We got it up to the point where we were ready to show it to people, and people were like, "What's this? What's wait? This isn't, you know, right? Like we want to we want to run through levels and shoot things with guns and find secrets." And we were like, "Shit! We've made a bunch of levels that are for this other thing." And right. people don't want this other thing, right? So we, we ended up retrofitting a lot of those levels to be standard. Right, okay. Levels, right? And, uh, uh, in the, you know, since they weren't designed from the beginning to be ratchet levels, I would imagine that's probably why they, you know, we didn't have a lot of places to hide those things. We weren't intending mm. people to go through them linearly and find secrets. Yeah. Fair enough. That, that's that my sense. guess. I have no right. idea if that's right, though. That, that makes sense. Because, yeah, I, I really like it. I remember one of my... Um, memories of that is that the last level is the one with the zombie pirates I think um, I had every skill point up to that level and I encountered a glitch where I couldn't get one skill point on that level so it was completely incompletable and it was really annoying <laughs> I could never complete the game fully because of that I don't know what caused it but it just wouldn't let me get the skill point I'm gonna apologize for that mainly because it wasn't my fault <laughs> <laughs> no I, I uh, don't know what it caused no, I, it could have been anything I, I really I was, have no uh, idea uh, no, the, the main reason I was mentioning that is I, uh, I designed a few levels very early on before that they, they changed direction, but then I switched over to Resistance 1. Mm. Uh, like I was working on the single player levels and the multiplayer and stuff, so when it comes to Deadlocked, I actually don't know a ton of, about it right. because I only worked on half of it. The first half. Right, I see. Fair enough. 
Okay. Yeah, so are you, um, are you and Tony going to do... Um, did Tony work on Deadlock as well? Tony worked on the entirety of yeah. Deadlock, yeah. Tony, he... Tony was the hero programmer on that game. He programmed Ratchet. Oh, okay. Um, are you going to do a um, uh, podcast on that when the HD collection's out? or? We might. We're, we're not sure yet. Uh, the thing with, with, with Deadlocked and Ratchet 1, we're a little scared that we won't have enough to say about it. Right. Uh, so, I mean, maybe if, uh, you know, maybe this will come out and people will say, oh, they just want more things to say about it? Here's a ton of questions. Yeah. And then maybe we'll have enough to say about it someday. But uh, yeah. if it happens, it probably won't happen until we're done with uh, uh, the podcast about the game we're working on together yeah. now. And then uh, after that, it'll probably happen. Very excited for that, by the way. What kind of game is it? I have curiosity. Um, well, we haven't said yet, uh, okay. uh, but Tony did on Twitter last night, uh, or I think it was the 8th, I think, on Twitter, he released the first full piece of concept art. Ooh, okay. Uh, and it is, uh, uh, the, the concept art is of a store, and that store... Maybe it could exist in an RPG universe or something. Ah, okay. Who knows what it is? It could be anything. <laughs> it might but, not be an RPG. It might but be yeah, a store. If, you, if you go there and take a look at the uh, at it, that's that's a uh, uh, that's going to be that store is where most of the game is going to take place. So I'll give you that oh, hint. Okay. Interesting. Okay. How much um, do you think it's going to be? How much money? Yeah. Oh, we're not sure yet. Uh, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I mean it's early. Early development. We have to see how much it costs, and then once we know how much it costs, and we get an idea of how many, how many units we need to sell to break even, and how many we're comfortable selling, you know, saying we'll sell, mm. then we come up with a price from that. that Fortunately, this is looking like it's going to be an inexpensive game to make, mm. uh, and and it's looking like it's going to be very high quality. Cool. Looking forward. So, to yeah, it, it'll it'll be good. It'll be good. But again, it's you know we're funding it with all of our own money, mm. so we just have to figure out how much it's going to cost. Yeah.